Maundy Thursday, welcome to Wake Up With God. We live stream daily Mass today. We'll attend the Holy Mass on Thursday, 28th, March, 2024. Maundy Thursday, I give you a new commandment, love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass. As we gather and we begin this Holy Thursday, there is no stronger truth when a God says, I am for you, and we are for one another, and we are one. I know that for many this is so difficult not to be able to be in this space and not to be able to celebrate Holy Thursday, perhaps in your own home church. I've heard from many, this is my favorite night of the year, and it breaks my heart that I can't be there tonight. We are here, and we are one. And so let us be one with each other and with our loving God who calls us together. So as we begin the sacred triduum, the paschal triduum, as we celebrate life, death, and resurrection, let us for a moment just be one with each other and with our God as we enter now these sacred three days, these sacred mysteries. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You have sanctified us by your love. And by your command, we rekindle the light of Passover. United in prayer this night with our Jewish sisters and brothers, we pray that the brightness of this light might inspire us and bring peace to our hurting world. We pray, O oh God, you have brought us to this holy night so that we might share together in the Lord's Supper through which your Son continues to reveal his love to us. So grant, we pray, of the life and death and resurrection that we are called to share that from this Eucharistic celebration, this banquet of holy love, we may draw the fullness of charity and life, and we ask it to renew us all in hope, especially now more than ever before. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And hopefully you've lit your candles at home, and now we can sit back, as I'm sure you are, and we can enter into the beauty of these sacred texts. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure itself a lamb one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, 
it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of the blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, and you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are seeing the blood. I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destruction will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in this world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, Jesus rose from supper and he took off his outer garment. He took a towel and he tied it around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples and dry them with the towel around his waist. He said to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, excuse me, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand it later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Unless I walk, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need, except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So, when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, Jesus said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and the teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I met Bridget probably 20... Oh, golly, 24 years ago. And she was only a year old when I first met her. I was 
newly ordained, and I was assigned to my home parish of St. Catherine, and I had gotten to know her parents so very well from the very beginning. They'd become such close friends, they and their four daughters. Bridget is the youngest. I remember the first time I was invited to their home for dinner, and um, when I was there for dinner, uh, the parents were getting ready uh, the meal, and uh, the four daughters were kind of doing their thing, and the youngest, Bridget, was crawling around, and the next thing I know, I looked over, and a lamp, a, a small lamp, had kind of fallen on top of Bridget, and so I came to the rescue, and uh, I lifted the lamp off of this, like, one-year-old, and um, I remind her to this very day that I saved your life, you know? And uh, she's a good kid, and she's more than a good kid. She today is a 25-year-old, uh, mature, and gifted young woman. Bridget let me into her heart the other day, and she let me into her heart because she sent me a text, and um, I wish people would stop texting me during Mass. But anyhow, um, Bridget uh, texted me, because she had seen the liturgy from Palm Sunday. Bridget is a nurse. Bridget is a first responder. Bridget, like all of those in the medical profession or on the front lines, she works with patients on the days in which she is assigned to work. She wrote to me and she said, good news always finds its way. It was the theme that I tried to work with on Palm Sunday. The exact message, she said, I needed to start this Holy Week and carry through. Lately, when I enter each room at Little Company of Mary and put on my gear, I say a Hail Mary. I walk in and I try to show no fear on my face and allow those who are suffering to know that it's okay to be scared and that we're in this together. I try not to allow the concerns of a lack of PPE overwhelm me and say another Hail Mary when I wash my hands out. I think about a patient who just passed and upstairs is his wife who is also hospitalized due to this virus. The people dying alone, not among loved ones, it eats away at me. I never quite felt such a strong calling until now. What an honor it is to stand next to strangers in some of the toughest times and try to continue to bring good news or at least a sense of hopefulness or calm. Thank you, she said, for continuing to lift me up even when times are tough and you've been dealing with your own losses to bring the good news to so many. You allow me to be able to be part or to do my part through this message. She's come a long way from that lamp when she was a year old. But Bridget let me into her heart, the heart of a young woman, the heart of a young nurse, the heart of one who has to go and to be with the sick and with the dying. It's sacred when somebody lets you into their heart. It's, someone when, it's sacred when someone is saying that I pray the Hail Mary and that I'm with people to try to bring a sense of calm. She is so mature, she's so gifted. She is a young woman of such beautiful faith. I think about Jerry who wrote to me, and Jerry wrote and shared with me that he signed himself in to Hazleton, which is in Minnesota, a place, a center for those who are going to work on recovery from an addiction. Jerry let me into his heart as well. And he shared not only his struggles and his addictions, but Jerry also shared with me this newfound discovery of faith and how difficult it is, but yet how beautiful it is, and the blessings that are opening up before him. It's tough because he's away from his wife and from his three young kids, but Jerry is entering into this heart the mystery of the heart of mercy, the mystery of the heart of, of recovery and liberation, the mystery of the heart of failure, the mystery of a heart of a struggle that has brought him to this moment. I really believe that Holy Thursday is about entering the heart. 
I think Holy Communion is about entering the heart of the Risen One. You see, the story that we have tonight is the one that we always read on Holy Thursday, but they always stop it at like verse, I think it's 15. But I want us to jump ahead a little bit. I know we're not supposed to, but we're gonna jump ahead just a few more verses. We're in the same scene, we're in the upper room. Jesus is there, as we've heard, he's washed the feet of his disciples. But just a few verses later, we're going to be hear about one who's called the beloved disciple. Scholars believe the beloved disciple was John himself. And what we're going to hear is that the beloved disciple, who's sitting right next to Jesus, is going to lean over. And when he leans over, he's going to put his head on the chest of Jesus. Scholars say that what he's doing is he's entering the heart of Jesus. He's going to lean on his chest so that he can hear his heart and not the thumping of a muscle, but he wants to hear the heart of God. And when the beloved disciple is leaning into the heart of God, he's looking at the world. And when he looks at the world, we get an idea of what he sees. He's going to see right before him betrayal. He's going to see denial. But if you look beyond the upper room, as he leans into the heart of God, he's going to see the world of suffering. He's going to see the world of failure. He'll see the world as we see the world, the world of addictions, the world of tremendous suffering today and fear. He's going to lean into the heart of God. He's going to see young nurses and young doctors who are trying to put on smiles and trying to bring hope when they're dealing with their own fear and their own intimidation. He's going to lean into the heart and he's going to hear the heart of God as he looks at young women and men struggling with addictions and those who have left their homes in order to become healthy again. He's going to lean into the heart and he's going to look at the world and he sees, he's going to see people who are afraid because of the unknown and the uncertainties of this pandemic and the unknowns and the uncertainties of finances and their businesses, small and large. He's going to lean into the heart and he's going to look at the world and he's going to see students who aren't sure if they're going back to school this year. He's going to lean into the heart and he's going to look at a world that has to be so distant and far apart and not being able to connect because of what's happening today. He leans into the heart because he wants to hear the voice of God. I believe that as we gather on this night, this Holy Thursday night, it's our invitation to lean again into the heart of Christ, to lean into the heart of the one who is mercy, to lean into the heart of the one who said to his friends, I'll be with you always, to lean into the heart of the one who said, I'm afraid too, as he goes into the garden, and we call it the garden of agony. We're in the garden of agony. We know of our fears and we know of our struggles, and so does the one who walks with us and the one who's never going to leave us alone. The one to whom Bridget relies upon, the one to whom Jerry relies upon, the one who wants to bring healing and strength and hope when we stand in situations of the unknown. It seems to me that as we lean into Holy Communion, we first have to lean into the mystery of Christ's heart and Christ's love. It is a heart that knows our heart. It is a heart that knows our joys and our struggles tonight. It is a heart that knows of our hopes and our dreams, and it's a heart that knows all of our intimidations and all of our fears. As we gather this night, let's pray that we might lean even further into the heart of God the God of compassion and the God who's there for us. The God who knew the world and yet the God who still got down on hands and knees and washed the gnarly, nasty feet of his friends who weren't the sharpest group in the world. Those who denied, those who betrayed, those who ran away, those who were so afraid, those who locked themselves up, those who had their own time of seclusion. And he washed their feet because he wanted to give them an example 
This is how you bring your heart to the heart of another. I have a nephew, and I have many nieces and nephews, but one in particular is good old Charlie. Charlie, who's part of a, uh, a triplet, a triplet uh, nephews, and they are 22 years old. Charlie has Down syndrome, profound, and he's also profoundly deaf. He has hearing aids, and yet he's never spoken, and the hearing aids help him just a little bit to kind of hear the sounds of the outside world and to hear the sounds of the voices of people in his life, particularly his mom and his dad and his brothers and sisters and all of us. He is a gentle, gentle soul. When you're in the presence of someone like Charlie, you're in the presence of the mystery of God. The presence of one who doesn't know anything about violence or nastiness. Only the presence of one who knows how to love. Every once in a while, if you speak up loud enough or Charlie gets close enough to you, and he can hear something, and he hears something that will bring him some joy, he puts on a smile like nobody else. And he enjoys some of those sounds. And when I think about that, I think Charlie is probably more like the beloved disciple than any of us. Because I believe he hears something mysterious and something so beautiful, probably clearer than all of us. As we gather this Holy Thursday night, let us pray that we'll hear with the ears of love. Let us pray that we'll hear with a heart of transformation. Let us pray that we'll hear with a heart of service. The heart that says, I am for you, and we are for one another. The heart of a young 25-year-old nurse who puts on scrubs, who walks into rooms alone, who brings the heart of compassion. Let's put on that heart of discovery, the heart of liberation, the heart of freedom, the heart because sometimes we feel like we're addicted to our fears or perhaps addicted to substances, but let's put on a different heart, the heart of mercy, the heart of great love. May that heart fill us tonight, our homes, our families, our churches, our world, no matter where we are. May the heart of God enlighten us, and may the heart of God guide us always. Normally, on Holy Thursday night in churches throughout the world, the next part of our ritual is to participate in the rite of foot washing. Well, clearly tonight, at least not in this place or churches around the world, there's no foot washing. I know that some families said that they're going to do it anyways. I know that my sister-in-law and brother have their basin and their water set up and they're going to wash each other's feet tonight, which is a wonderful thing if you can do that at home. But I would suspect that for most of us, that may not be happening. But tonight, what we'd like to do is introduce you to a, uh, a photo slideshow of various service ministries in lieu of the foot washing. Jesus reminds us of service and kinship for others. So enjoy for the next few moments these foot washing images. First responders and healthcare professionals various ministries here at Old St. Patrick's, and of course, our kinship initiative in North Lawndale. Please enjoy them and enter in to the heart of great love. tonight, we come with so many needs, so many hopes, so many dreams, 
so many frustrations. Let us with great confidence lift them up with the special prayers on this Holy Thursday night. and sisters as they begin their celebration of Passover. This year we know our experiences will be much different than any other year in history. Despite the turmoil and chaos around us, may we find time during these holy days to be still and feel God's presence. For this we pray. Jesus taught us to kneel down in selfless care. This selflessness is most evident in our first responders and healthcare workers. Each day, they bravely respond to care for the sick, the suffering, and the dying. May they remain safe and receive the support and the supplies they desperately need to continue their life-saving work. For all of this, we pray. working from home. These people continue to go to work, not by choice, but from a necessity to pay their bills. Mail carriers, public transportation, employees, government officials, restaurant workers, and a host of retail and grocery store employees. May they stay safe and healthy while providing the essential services keeping our society functioning. For this we pray. Besides physical symptoms, this pandemic has severely affected everyone's emotional and mental well-being, particularly those who cannot baptize their children, who cannot get married, who cannot visit sick or elderly loved ones, who cannot bury their deceased, who are trapped with fear in their own homes, who are isolated and lonely in their homes or hospital rooms. While we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other to provide comfort, May we find ways to be the loving embrace of God to all of our neighbors. For this, we pray. We know this virus pervades all races, cultures, and religious. However, people of color have a higher than average rate of underlying health issues caused by living in severe poverty without proper access to health care. These communities are bearing the brunt of this virus. May we as a society come together to meet the immediate needs of those at greatest risk to the virus and to develop an equitable economic system that will prevent such disasters in the future. For this we pray. As 
as many of us quarantine ourselves in our homes. Let us pray for those that are less fortunate and who are homeless and living on the streets of Chicago, scared of losing their homes because of unemployment, in temporary housing because of natural disasters, on the move, fleeing their homes because of violence or war or fires. May the Holy Spirit guide them to the proper shelter and health care they desperately deserve. For this we pray. God, on this Holy Thursday night, like the beloved disciple who sat next to your son, may we lean into the heart of mercy. May we lean into the heart of love. May we lean into the heart of healing and hope. Lord God, share your heart with us. Lift us up so that we will go forth and be your heart of mercy for the world. We bring to you our prayers and our needs those that we have spoken and those that are in all of our homes, we put them before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we've said before, as we've gathered for these live stream liturgies, clearly the place is empty, like, mo like all of our churches. And so clearly we are entering into many uh, difficulties financially and otherwise. But we give thanks for the great generosity of all of you and those of you who have donated so beautifully through uh, the live streaming and those of you who uh, are part of the uh, regular contributing uh, community here at Old St. Patrick's. On Holy Thursday night, what we have done every year by tradition and by custom is to support many of our outreach efforts. Um, I invite you again tonight uh, if you're able to do so, to make a donation. And these donations are going to go towards some of our partners, the Franciscan Outreach, the St. Agatha Catholic Community in North Lawndale, the Boulevard, the Firehouse Community Art Center in North Lawndale, and uh, we will, uh, from your donations, we will help them. As you can imagine, they don't have the audience that we have. And so uh, I really appeal to your generosity on their behalf so that we might continue to help uh, our sisters and brothers uh, in these particular organizations. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you. 
So then on this Holy Thursday night, let us pray together here and at home and around wherever you are participating in this Holy Thursday liturgy. Let's pray that these gifts of bread and wine will be pleasing and acceptable to God, who is the Almighty One. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise, the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's holy church. Grant to us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks then to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just. It's good for us to gather in this way to give you our thanks and praise, Almighty God, through Jesus, our risen Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so then tonight with angels and saints, with all of our ancestors who handed this tradition on to us, we blend our voices to them all as we sing that unending hymn of praise. and you're the source of everything that is holy. And so we ask you now, make holy these gifts. Send forth your spirit so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first gathered with his friends around a table. He took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Once more, after giving thanks, he handed it to his friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. And in this bread I drink this cup. Therefore, as we gather to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O God, this life-giving bread, this chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you've held us all worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that as we share now in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church that literally tonight is spread throughout the world in so many homes and so many places. Bring us all together in unity, in oneness, in charity, in love, in our compassion. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember too, all of our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
We remember especially all those whose lives have succumbed to COVID-19, all those who have died, remember all their family members, all those who have cared for them and those who mourn for them. Welcome them all into the light and peace of your presence. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles and martyrs, Patrick and Bridget, all the holy women and men who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Through him, with him, and him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. is one. We blend heart and voice together. We remember our mission that no matter what, we're called to go forth and build the kingdom. And we'll figure out how we can wash feet and how we can nourish. We'll figure it out. We'll do it. And so together, we join our voices as we pray. peace to us in our days, in our hearts and in our homes and throughout the world. By your mercy, keep us all free from sin, safe from our fears and worries and distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but look rather on the faith of your church that gathers tonight throughout the world, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will as you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And for a moment, however you want to do it electronically or just in your, the quiet of your own home, let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
behold God's Lamb. Behold the one whose only desire is to nourish us, is to strengthen our hearts so that we'll go forth and strengthen the world with great love. Happy should all of us be then who are called this Holy Thursday night to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Almighty God, the supper that your Son left us this night sustains our life on earth. Grant that our hunger may be fully satisfied in the everlasting banquet of heaven. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we begin now the sacred custom of transferring the Eucharist uh, to the tabernacle. And it is a time for us, if you so desire now, to light any candles in your home. Um, and also to dim the lights, if you so desire, in your home. To join us as we will dim the lights here at Old St. Patrick's as we begin our night watch, as we continue these sacred three days, as we wait, as we watch, as we pray, as we hope, as we support, and as we love one another, as we do so with the Lord, with whom we now join in this sacred and most holy night. Thank you. 
That night, after supper, Jesus went with the disciples to a small estate called Gethsemane. Often they met together in the garden there, and he said to them, Stay here while I go over there to pray. and John. Now recall that he took them to the mountain when he was transfigured. Also recall that he told them he first had to suffer before he entered into his glory. Sadness came over him and great distress. My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here with me. Stay awake with me. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let it be as you, my father, not I, would have it. Peter came back, but Jesus came back to Peter, James, and John and found them asleep. So you had not the strength to keep awake with me, not even for one hour? You are the ones who should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is so weak. turned aside from them, and a second time he prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass me by without drinking it, your will be done. Again he came back to the three. Again they were sleeping. Your will, Father, your will.
Tôi tin tưởng và phó thác vào Thiên Chúa. Mọi lời cầu nguyện, lỗ lực của mọi người sẽ được đền đáp. Chúc quý vị và các bạn luôn luôn bình an và hạnh phúc trong ơn Chúa.